All right. Let's look at Shaq versus uh, Fabi. They played a Nimzoindian. F3, the favorite move of uh, Matt Larson. Now, I wonder who won this game. The guy who played F3 or the guy who didn't? Let's find out. C5 is a move. D5 is a move. This is one of the main lines. Now, if I remember correctly, and I don't, but if I do, in the Sinkfield Cup seven or eight years ago, I think, um, a Ro might have been less than that, might have been six years ago, uh, Aronian destroyed Wesley So in this position. Aronian was black. Aronian, da-da-da, I think he beat Wesley, da-da-da. Uh, let's see. Mm, yeah, I've, yeah, you're spelling his name incredibly badly, but yeah, I've, I've played Dmitry Obukov like 10 times in chess. <laughs> I think he drew once, but maybe I made that up. Maybe I won every game, but he might have drawn once. Okay, so uh, Shaq played bishop d2. Take b4, always retreat. So white has a ton of space. White has two bishops, but white hasn't done anything. All his pieces are here. So, you know, it's about equal. Black has a lot of space here. And black got rid of his dark squared bishop, put all his pawns on dark squares. It's a battle of ideas. Knight e2, not the engine move. The engine does not approve. I wonder what the engine says here, because I wouldn't play ED. I would play CD. Yeah, the engine prefers CD. I mean, and Shaq is pretty CD, if you ask me. But maybe he has ED. I don't know. Like, I mean, the only way to find out is if the squares are blue. I guess he. I guess ED is his game. I thought he's more CD than ED, but maybe he's both. Yeah. Yeah, the truth hurts. It's the Viagra attack. Eh. Uh, have you had dinner with Boris Gelfand? I mean, I've eaten with him, but I don't know if we went to dinner and, you know, we kissed or anything. But, you know, I, I know Boris pretty well. Um, yeah. I'm sure we've eaten at the same table, but, you know, neither one of us cared, I guess. Uh, let's see. Yeah, my jokes are too good for this for this world. I mean, this channel. I mean, you guys. Okay, he put it in H. So he wants to push his F pawn and play queen H4 check. And this is common in the F3 Nimzo that black plays knight H5 early and tries to punish white. King F2 is unnecessary. And in this position, I was looking with the engine earlier, like when the game was live. And after this, it said black was winning and he didn't play the best way. He played the second best way. The engine wants to play queen check. G3 is forced, otherwise you lose a piece. Knight G3, taking is forced, takes. And it likes black quite a bit, but Mamadrov allowed this and Fabi didn't do it, which is understandable. The black's position looks a little shaky. For an engine, the engine's like, Pfft. but for a person, you know, like G5 is like the way out after white plays something like we need to. But it looks bad for black, but the engine loves black. But it's very understandable not doing that. So Fabi just took and played G5, which is also good. Bishop C1 is the best move. Always retreat. Yeah, and the engine wants him to play F4 so that, so that white never plays F4. But he played this, and then he played F4, which is a good move. Because this pawn here is stupid. It blocks the rook. It blocks the bishop. If you play f4, um, then he could play you know, knight to e5 and bishop f5. There must have been a tactical reason he didn't like f4. Like h4, bishop d3. Something he didn't like about it. Because if he plays here and gets away with it, the knight has e5, the bishop has f5. The pawn on f4 is restricting white. Okay, but he played this. F4, which gives away these squares. So Fabi's like, whatever. I take whatever squares I want. 
Okay, king g1 is not the engine move. He wants him to play g3, but all right. It's obviously too complicated for humans to do. That move is reasonable. F4 is super aggressive. Bishop's coming out, queen's coming out. I agree with that move. Now, even to GMs, not just you guys, even the GMs, White's position looks ridiculous. So if you're like, well, wait a minute, well, this is White's position, that's ridiculous. But I agree. And the engine's like equal, so you guys are choking on your own rage. I agree. But engines like bishops, White's pawn structure is good. White has space in the center. If black doesn't have an immediate win and nothing happens for 10 moves, white's going to be fine. The engine doesn't think white has an, the black has an immediate win, so it says that white's doing okay. That's the correct move. That's also correct. That's correct. That's correct. And yeah, now the engine thinks, you know, white's fine. White's up two pawns and has the two bishops. Queen g7. The engine prefers just playing rook e8 right away. Now for an engine, bishop takes e4 is a good move. But for a human, this move looks crazy. Um, because you could play rook e8 or queen d4 check or bishop e4. And the problem is if you take right away, I have rook a e8. And you can't really save your bishop. And this looks terrible. Um... But yeah, the engine just says white's better if he plays like bishop g3. And white's up material. White's threatening this. Eventually white escapes. So the end, and this is attacked. So the engine actually likes white here, even though it looks ridiculous. It's hard to, it's hard to play these moves as a human because you just assume that black's just winning. You know, queen d4. I mean, but the engine's like, nope, what, better for white. So... That's why he didn't take on e4. He got his rook into the game. Bishop g6. Put it in h. Rook a8. Still about equal. Queen c2. I mean, white's up two pawns and has two bishops. This pawn's weak. The king's going to be safe on h2. It just looks terrible for white. But, you know, white has advantages also. Okay, queen d4. The, the engine does not like queen d4 very much. Um, okay, king h2. King's good on h2. Rook f7 is good. Double up on the bubble up. Now, the players are getting into time trouble here because the game is so complicated, but they're actually playing pretty well. This game should end in a draw. In fact, the engine prefers white here. He played queen e2, and I remember watching the chess.com commentary, and then they were like, What? Who would play queen e2 lining it up against the rook? And that's actually a bad move. Um, white's better if he just takes on, on uh, e4. Um, and the fact that he's up two pawns, black is struggling for a draw. Um, okay, so knight f6, which defends and attacks this. So I'm sure he saw knight f6, but he thought a long time here. It's very weird to play queen e2 when this move attacks your queen and attacks your bishop. Then you start thinking. The queen e2 is just not good. 400 centages. Xenoid 1. Now white's still okay here, but this is where he blundered the game away. He played queen d1, which is terrible. Queen f2, surprisingly, is, is considered equal by the engine. Although the commentators for chess.com liked black, which I agree with. Are all the games done? Mm -hmm. How'd Spencer do? Uh, he played what? I think he's still in there. Okay, and then uh, Archer? Lost. Aw. Yeah. Why can't you say he won? Huh. Oh. They put me on Chess TV right away when I started, so okay. I, I got a million people. Yay. Yeah. You want to have a seat, or are you doing well, stuff? I, go, I have to go check on my turn. You came just when I finished my Perrier. Okay. Yeah, if you want one. Yeah. They asked me, some in the chat said, have you ever had a job? And I said, I can't answer that because Karen will be mad. Oh. <laughs> and then I nodded a happy face. Is there, is there any Perrier in there? Because, you know, I drink a lot of Perrier. There's a ton of Perrier. But you took three for me and I took two. We steal a lot of Perrier. Mm -hmm. Don't tell the IRS. You have to check the line. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, I played 
right. Here's the beautiful lady. Let's see if I do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go check the tournament. Hey, Curious Chimpanzee. Matthew Esquin. At the end of one of the, uh, during one of the episodes of uh, Curb, Curb, he, they have a party and he says, I'm not going to have a good time. She says, yes, you will. So he bets her, although there's nothing if she wins. She has to, you know, do stuff to him in the car. And then he's, and then she's like, all right. Then they have the party and he's like, I didn't have a good time. So at the very, very end of the episode, they're driving and he says, somebody lost a bet. And she goes, Ugh. and then she unbuckles her seatbelt, and then the episode ends. Oh, yeah. Tough episode. Curb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curb's great, but you're always falling asleep, but it's really good. I'm never going to forget, never going to forget the scene in Louie. Yeah. <laughs> Where she, what's the actress say? She like, get on there, like he doesn't want it. Um, you know, he wants a BJ, but he doesn't want to sip and she gets mad. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's Melissa Leo. Oh, yeah, I love her. Yeah, Melissa Leo won an Academy Award for The Fighter. Man, she's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But did you see The Fighter? No. She was great. And at the end of Flight, the Denzel Washington movie, mm -hmm. she's the prosecuting it. She she questions Denzel Washington, and he cracks. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's yeah she did the movie for like five minutes. Yeah, Flight. she's funny. She won an Academy Award for for um, The Fighter. Okay. The Fighter's great. Oh, I have to say. No, I mean, it's great. It's got, what's his name? That crazy guy. Uh, who's the craziest Rourke? guy ever? What? Is that the one with Rourke? No, that's the wrestler. Oh, that's the This is the fighter. Oh, the fighter. The, the guy who's Batman or something. I don't know. I mean, he's great. The Welsh actor. Um, he went crazy on this guy, and they have a recording of it. They made fun of it on Family oh, yeah, Guy. Well, yeah. yeah, Christian Bale's in it. And then uh, and Melissa, Melissa, Melissa Leo was ba basically unknown, and then she won an Academy Award. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, if, if you watch The Fighter and you realize that Christian Bale's not from Boston, you're like, wait a minute, because it sounds like he's from Boston. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I mean, he's he's great. Yeah, he's the greatest. He's the, and he's crazy. Leonardo DiCaprio, boo, boo. Mel Gibson, boo. What happened? How'd Spencer do? I won. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Got some snacks there? That's from, yeah, you can have some. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, how, how was the game? Perfect. It was tough. You know, I yeah. don't think it was perfect. I saw, I saw knight d seven. I moved like six. Knight f three, and that's the last position I saw. It's still theory. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a lot of theory on knight g eight. The Brooklyn variation. Yeah. yeah. I prepped. Did, did you sleep until the game? No sleep till Brooklyn. Oh right. right. Actually, I was thinking of that song in my head when I, when he played it. So basically, at Publix, you paid nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It looks pretty good. Yeah. They taste okay. It looks more like food than other stuff that I buy. Right. I'll just take one. I can't yeah, hurt you. Carbs it, but... There's a lot, probably. No, no. no. All right. All right. Back to whatever it is I was doing. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah. So after Queen F2 X Glam, which Shaq did not play. Um, yeah. He, he, Bishop takes D3. Uh, G takes F6, Bishop takes F1, always play Bishop takes F1. Wait, this isn't, this isn't what he should do. I think, I thought he should trade Queens. Now I'm getting confused. Bishop takes D3. Oh, I'm sorry, Knight G4 check. This is, see this line being equal, Hess and Krikor said, okay, but this line they were not impressed. Yeah. Yeah, this position, they thought black was better, but the engine says white's better. Man, this is attacked, this is attacked, this is attacked, this is passed, and these are triple pawns and white's slightly better. The mysteries of life. So there you go. So probably Shaq saw queen f2, and thought queen d1 was similar because the, the engine line after queen f2 is takes, 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 queen g3 check, put it in h, rook takes f1. And Shaq got a very similar position to this. Similar. And the difference is if you play rook takes f6 here, bishop e5 is, is actually winning for white. 
amazing. Because you you know you see what I'm saying now. All right. Yeah, if you take with the queen, I trade queens. I take this. I'm up a pawn, and my rook's crushing you. And yeah, it's just you know it, it you know it's attacking everything and pinning everything. So in the way that Shaq played was very similar, but Rook takes f6 was winning for Fabi. Queen d1, which is a bad move. Queen f2 is better. Queen g4 check, not queen g3 check. And you guys are like, so? And I'm like, Wesley, so? And you're like, no. If the queen was on g3, this position's equal. With the queen on g4, black is winning. Because now I play rook takes f6. Bishop here does nothing because the queen's not on g3. So I can just take it with check. And that difference actually is the game. Now black's up material. The bishop is pinned and or double pinned. The c pawn's hanging. The b pawn's hanging. Here comes the rook. So black's just winning now. So queen f2, the engine believes, leads to equality. And queen d1 just loses right away. And they're in you know pretty good time trouble here. But yeah, that's funny that queen f2. Now, from Shaq's point of view, when he was analyzing this in time trouble, he probably didn't think g4 was a worse square than g3. g4 looks more aggressive, but it is. So he may have seen queen f2 and thought it's very similar, but his move is better. But he was wrong. Okay. Yeah, now black's just winning. Now, the commentators, Hess and Krikor, we're like, oh, this is so complicated, and Fabi's in time trouble. And I was like, what? It's Black's up in exchange, and White's pawns are all hanging. Fabi's Fabi. This move's actually a blunder. Um, yeah, he's losing anyway, but this move like loses immediately. And Fabi played Rook G at X clam. So this is funny. After Rook F8, which is a terrible move, he didn't play Rook F8. Now we have bishop takes d6, confusing the audience. And still, um, still good for black, but look at this variation. Takes, takes, check. If you play rook h3, I take this. So you have to play here. Takes, and now, bam, bishop e5 check. If you put a rook on f6, like with this rook on f6, I take and I win. This rook on f6, I play g5, and I still win. So king g8 is forced. And this position, it says, is better for black. But if I was in time trouble, I wouldn't know if it was better for black or not. Because, you know, pass pawn here, pass pawn here, give a dog a bone. But rook a6 seems to win. But okay, if I was in time trouble, I wouldn't know that. But anyway... Fabi played more accurately, rook eight, he played rook g8. And now when the queen goes to h4, now he can play rook f8 winning, just like in before, except when the queen was on g4, white could play bishop takes d6 because the pawn was defending the queen. Now you can't play bishop takes d6 because your queen's hanging. Fabi didn't play rook here, which surprised everybody because it's completely winning. Um, the main line is bishop g5, rook f3, queen d4, cd4, gf3, and obviously black's winning here. Rook takes or d3, everything wins. So I, I don't know why he didn't play rook f8 because he thought forever here. The other way for white to play that doesn't just go into the lost ending is, is g3. Then you just take all the pawns with check. I mean, terrible. Yeah, it's like plus seven for black. So I don't know why Fabi didn't go here. His move wins too. He took this, threatening checkmate and defending the rook. So he stopped checkmate. Well, you know, black's just winning here. He's up in exchange for nothing. And there was a funny trick here. I want to show you the funny trick. It didn't happen, but it was funny. Uh, oh, it was later. Yeah, it was in this position. Yeah. So in this position... Surprising everybody who was watching, Mama Jarv resigned. Now, probably the reason he resigned, which they didn't mention when I was watching, because it was what I was thinking, is if I can ever sack the exchange, put my queen here, if the bishop moves, you take this, 
if I can ever sack the exchange, I should win with a5, a4 and make a queen. And these, this, you know, that's nothing. And if you, if you don't let me sack the exchange, then you're, you know. And, and they found a really cool line. After queen e3, if black plays queen g8, double question mark, <laughs> now white's better. <laughs> bishop takes d6. So if you take the bishop, queen e5 check wins the rook. If you take this, surprisingly, black has nothing. And white's threatening bishop e5 check. And then some. So white's actually better here. You can't play like h6 and move your king up because... Actually, you can do that. Oh, I just take it. Yeah. I was trying to go here after bishop here check, but I can't play h6. Okay. So in this position, after here, rook g6, Mamajov resigned. And Fabi still has to make two moves, and he had about a minute left. So they were like really shocked he resigned. Now, if you let the engine sit, it says, you know, blacks plus five, plus six, plus seven. And blacks winning. There's no doubt blacks winning. But they were like, why did he resign? And he could have played for some tactical tricks, I guess. And they were like, he had enough because he got, you know, he got tricked tactically in the late middle game. And he was like, boh. You know, so he was pr probably really upset. But yeah, you shouldn't resign when, you're, when your opponent's in time trouble and it's some weird position. It is winning for black, but it's not resignable, especially in time trouble. Frankly, I wouldn't resign if it was in time trouble, but I don't like to resign. Yeah. So Fabi wins. Go Fabi. Yeah. Can you still play queen g1? You could, but uh, it's illegal. It makes no sense. 